Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines. A comprehensive legislation on data privacy is being formulated to strengthen the protection of personal data. More than 1200 railway stations identified for upgradation under Adarsh station scheme. Supreme Court asked Meghalaya government to deposit 100 crore rupees fine imposed by National Green Tribunal. Death toll in Tivare Dam breach rises to seven in Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra, 24 others missing. At least 40 people killed and 80 injured in an airstrike at Tripoli in Libya. And in cricket, hosts England take on New Zealand in the ICC World Cup at Chesterley Street this afternoon. The government is considering bringing a data protection legislation in the country to strengthen the protection of personal data. Minister of Electronics and Information and Technology Ravi Shankar Prasad said this in a written reply in the Lok Sabha today. He said a comprehensive legislation on data privacy is under formulation. The government constituted a committee of experts on data protection chaired by Justice Retired B.N. Shri Krishna of the Supreme Court to study various issues relating to data protection and come out with a data protection bill. The committee has brought out a draft personal data protection bill on which consultations have been conducted and the bill is intended to be placed in Parliament soon. Railway Minister Piyush Goel today said, as many as 1,253 railway stations have so far been identified for upgradation under the Adarsh station scheme. Speaking during the question hour in Lok Sabha, the Railway Minister said during 2018-19, additionally 68 stations have been substantially upgraded through zonal railways. The Minister said against these, 1,103 stations have already been developed and remaining 150 are targeted to be developed by 2019-20. He said various amenities like improvement of platform surface, toilet facilities, provision of foot over bridges, provision of lifts and escalators and others have been provided under the scheme. Replying to a question on whether the government has any proposal to revamp all railway stations of aspirational districts in the near future, Mr. Goyal said as many as 87 of the 115 aspirational districts have been connected with the rail network. The Supreme Court has directed the Meghalaya government to deposit the 100 crore rupee fine imposed on it by the National Green Tribunal. The NGT had imposed the fine in January this year for failing to curb illegal coal mining. A bench of justices Ashok Bhushan and K.M. Joseph directed the state administration to hand over the illegally extracted coal to Coal India Limited, which will auction it and deposit the funds with the state government. The bench also allowed the mining operation to go on in the state on the privately and community-owned land subject to the permissions from the concerned authorities. In Mizoram, 110 members, including children of 54 families who took refuge in Long Tlai district, were sent back to their homeland, Myanmar, yesterday. These refugees belong to Rakhine tribe of Myanmar who fled in 2015 in ethnic clashes between Myanmar army and a militant outfit Arakan army. These families settled at a village in the southern part of Long Klai district bordering Myanmar. Long Klai district DC Shashankala said the refugees are being taken safely to their country and 15 days ration for them has been ensured. Acting on an order from the Union Home Ministry, these families were escorted to Varang village of Myanmar by the Assam Rifles, Deputy Commissioner of Long Tlai and Mizoram Police. Union Home Minister and BJP President Amit Shah will be on a two-day visit to his home state, Gujarat, from today. State BJP President Jitu Vaghani has said that the party will accord a grand welcome to Mr. Shah for BJP's landslide victory in the recent general elections. More from our correspondent. 
This will be the first visit of Mr. Amit Shah to his home state after assuming the charge as Union Home Minister. After reaching Ahmedabad, Mr. Shah will inaugurate the flyover bridge on busy income tax circle of Ashram Road. Mr. Shah will also inaugurate newly built DK Patel Community Hall and a library in Naranpur area and five revenue offices for Dalatis in his Gandhinagar Lok Sabha constituency. He will address the party workers of Gandhinagar constituency at Gujarat University Convention Hall this evening after his felicitation. Mr. Shah will will also perform traditional Mangla Aarti at Lord Jagannath Temple in Ahmedabad tomorrow early morning before the start of historic Rath Yatra of Lord Jagannath. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi today said the allegation by Congress leader Siddharamaya on the Prime Minister and Home Minister over the resignation of two Karnataka Congress MLAs is baseless. Talking to media outside Parliament, Mr. Joshi said the two MLAs were upset with their leadership in the party. He accused Siddharamaya of destabilizing the H.D. Kumaraswamy government in Karnataka. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The death toll in Tivare Dam breach incident has risen to seven in Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra. Twenty-four others are missing after the incident in Chiplun Taluka. More from our correspondent. The district administration has informed that at least 13 houses were washed away due to flooding and released the list of people missing. Bodies of all seven people have been found. Civil administration, police, volunteers and NDRS teams are still carrying out rescue operations. In Mumbai, though rains have stopped since morning, the Central Railway has decided to operate its suburban service in Mumbai Division on Sunday timetable, which means fewer trains compared to weekdays. This has led to extremely heavy rush at all stations in Mumbai on a working day today as commuters, including office goers and students, are stranded at various railway stations. The Western Railways has decided to run trains on a normal schedule, giving much respite to the commuters. Sonali Ghatayapati, AIR News, Mumbai. Union Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri, while talking to a news agency, has clarified that Mumbai Airport has not been shut. One of the runways which used to take 45 flights per hour is now taking 36 flights, so there has been some dislocation. It will be sorted out very quickly. Heavy to very heavy rains that lashed Mumbai, Pune and Konkan region in the last two days wreaked havoc, claiming at least 34 lives in various Rain-related incidents like electrocution, wall collapse, drowning and suffocation. Several villages in Konkan were cut off from the rest of the state, while Mumbai's lifeline, the suburban trains, had to suspend services for 12 hours on the central line. In Gujarat, total 42 talukas have received light to moderate rain during the past 24 hours. Maximum 56 mm rainfall has been recorded in Vallabhipur Taluka of Bhavnagar district of Saurashtra. Local weather office has predicted widespread rain in south, central and north Gujarat today. In Delhi, it was a hot and humid morning with the minimum temperature settling at 29.3 degrees Celsius, two notches above normal. Met Department has forecast partly cloudy sky during the day with a possibility of light rain in the evening. It said the maximum and minimum temperatures are likely to settle around 38 and 29 degrees Celsius. The Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, yesterday conducted searches at around 48 places in 12 states and union territories as part of a special drive in connection with banking scams across the country. A CBI official release said 14 cases have been registered related to these scams, which amount to more than 1,000 crores on the complaints of several banks, including Exim Bank, State Bank of India and Union Bank of India, among others. The cases were registered against various private companies, their promoters and directors, and unknown public servants. The places where searches were conducted include Delhi, Mumbai, Ludhiana, Thane, Valsad, Pune, Palani, Gaya, Gurugram, Chandigarh, Bhopal, Surat, Kolar, Silvasa, Aligarh, Fazilka, Muktsar and Bhavanigarh. Benchmark domestic indices today logged gains for the third session in a row in afternoon trade. The Sensex and the Nifty both were up marginally, even as cues from Asian stocks were negative. Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange climbed 68 points to trade at 39,885 a short while ago. 
The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also added 21 points to trade at 11,931. The rupee at the forex market also appreciated 7 paise to around 68 rupees and 87 paise against the US dollar in afternoon deals. The NDA government in its second term will present its first budget in Parliament on the 5th of July. People have high hopes from Union Budget 2019. In Telangana, people from different walks of life spoke about their expectations from this year's Union Budget. An employee in the private sector in Hyderabad, Subramaniam, is expecting the budget to have SOPs for employees in terms of IT relaxations. I'm Subramaniam from Hyderabad. I'm a private employee. I'm being a salary class. My expectation from the budget would be for more benefit in income tax, lower tax lab or higher exemption limits. Second, I prefer something more uh, incentives for buying uh, electric vehicles. An 82-year-old retired employee, Venkateshwar Rao, who hails from the Handloom Weavers community, highlights the need for treating weavers at par with the organized sector and provide benefits, especially in areas like education and health. I'm Dr. Agrati Venkateshwar Rao, the Handloom Weavers. They have been clothing the nation. My expectation from this budget is that uh, the Government of India should address problems relating to health care, education of the children, housing for the weavers, also things like pension, provident fund, etc., which are being enjoyed by the workers in the organized sector. The Skill India mission is helping youth to get jobs easily in an increasingly competitive labor market or establish their own industries. A case in point is the training programs being offered by the Central Footwear Training Institute in Chennai, a unit of the Union Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. It has enabled thousands of youth from across the country to get placements in prominent Indian and multinational footwear design and manufacturing firms. A report. The supply of manpower in the labor market far outweighs the demand. It makes people to frantically search for placements. However, in several sectors, there are huge demands for skilled manpower. Footwear industry alone looks for about 30,000 trained staff every year. The Central Footwear Research Institute offers seven long-term and eight short-term training courses with scholarships for the youth. Its director, Dr. K. Murali, has said those who could not complete 10th standard as well as BE graduates join for the courses based on their qualifications and all get placed. In this ever-expanding industry, the Skill India program enables youth to be the most sought after. Jai Singh, AR News, Chennai. In Libya, at least 40 people were killed and 80 others injured in an airstrike which hit a detention center for migrants in Tripoli early this morning. The UN-supported government blamed the self-styled Libyan National Army led by Khalifa Hitler for the airstrike. And now news from the ICC Cricket World Cup. Host England will face New Zealand in the last group match at Castellar Street in a short while from now. After Sunday's success against India, England will enter into the game as a confident side while New Zealand will head into the game following successive losses to Pakistan and Australia. Even a defeat would not spell the end of either team's chances of entering into the top four from the 10-team round-robin phase. The winner of today's game will book a semi-final berth, while the losing team will have to wait for the result of Pakistan's final game against Bangladesh and Sri Lanka's last match against India. All India Radio will broadcast live commentary on the match. RT Rana Sports Test. In badminton, the Indian trio of Ajay Jairam, Saurabh Verma and Lakshasen progressed to the second round of the men's singles event of Canada Open Super 100 Tournament. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. A comprehensive legislation on data privacy is being formulated to strengthen the protection of personal data. More than 1,200 railway stations identified for upgradation under Adarsh station scheme. Supreme Court asked Meghalaya government to deposit 100 crore rupees fine imposed by National Green Tribunal. Death toll in Tevere Dam breach rises to seven in Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra, 24 others missing. 
At least 40 people killed and 80 injured in an airstrike at Tripoli in Libya. And in cricket, hosts England take on New Zealand in the ICC World Cup at Chesterley Street this afternoon. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com. And with that, we end the midday news.